So today we're going over an alternative kernel for Debian-based system. Hey everyone, what's happening? Today we're going over an alternative kernel install for Debian-based system. And uh, the alternative kernel that we're going to be using for today is called the Liquorix kernel. Now this is an alternative kernel that has some improvements built into it. It's based off the Linux kernel. It's still a Linux kernel. It just has some uh, modifications. It's a low latency kernel and it's basically built for Debian SID, but you can use it in any Debian base. Now this can have significant benefits such as improved response time for gaming and uh, video editing, etc. But also you're installing an alternative kernel which can have a some drawbacks uh, one of them is this is a rolling kernel so every time that they update it it's going to update on your system now you can pin the package so it doesn't update your kernel every time but that can lead to security issues so I, I don't really suggest doing that another thing is um, it can provide some instability with device drivers even though I've never experienced that problem with the Liquorix kernel. So weigh those issues accordingly. Now I would say this is minimal risk and it actually does not require too much skill to be able to install this as long as you follow the instructions because the instructions are well documented on how to get it on your system. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to the desktop in a minute. Now another thing is this is for Debian based systems. Now, I believe there is a Liquorix build for art systems in the AUR, but we're not going to go over that today. If you would like to, me to research that and uh, show you how to install it in art, I will do that, but this is strictly for Debian based today. So we're going to go and jump over to that desktop and start. So here we are on the main Liquorix site. Liquorix.net. I will link this in the description below so you can just click on the link and come here. Now uh, also I'm going to show you a couple other things like the GitHub which is the Zen kernel which is what Liquorix is. It's also called the Zen kernel so you can compile this from source however if you're going to compile this from source you need to know how to compile your own kernels and uh, if you don't have an internal work, internal knowledge of how Linux works, I wouldn't necessarily suggest it. But you can compile it on any distribution that you want to. And of course, there's the Liquorix Debian package GitHub right here. I'll link the this in the description as well. I won't link to the Debian package because, well, this is how you get the Debian packages. So. Now, of course, it says major features. It's got the memory subsystems right here, CPU scheduler, and uh, it's got the scheduling latency and stuff. It is a low latency type kernel um, or a lower latency kernel. It might not be the lowest latency, but it is a lower latency kernel. It's got a bunch of other features built into it that a lot of other distribution kernels don't. This is also designed to be a drop-in replacement meaning that it is prepackaged for you. And the way you do it is uh, you go down here to install, right down here. And this is where you need to know what your system runs. Because you, you got Debian prerequisite, prerequisites right here. And then of course here you have your Ubuntu prerequisites. Now uh, your Debian prerequisites will be your Debian branches, which is uh, Buster, which is stable, Bullseye, which is uh, testing and then SID unstable and that would also include and the Debian prerequisites would also include stuff like MX Linux, Linux Mint Debian Edition, um, Dev1, those types of uh, distributions. If it's based off of Debian stable or testing or SID, well or well it might be uh, if it's based off a of Debian uh, stable or testing you're gonna want to use this now if you are running an Ubuntu, an Ubuntu based distribution that would be your Ubuntu 
Ubuntu flavors such as Kabuntu, Labuntu, etc. Uh, and Lennox Mint, Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE. I had to think of the last one. This is what this is what you'll use and you'll add the PPA. So basically if you're running a Debian or a Debian based system, you would copy and paste this line. If you're running Ubuntu, you would copy and paste this line and add the PPA. And then and then you would run that sudo app get install. So now we're just going to go ahead and demonstrate this. Now this is Linux Mint Cinnamon, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the terminal. And we're gonna go ahead and install this. So I'm gonna go ahead and press um, Alt Tab. And it seems how we're running Linux Mint Cinnamon. We're gonna do the prerequis prerequisite right here. We're gonna copy this pseudo, pseudo app repository and the update. So we're gonna go do this and do a Control Shift V. And now it's gonna ask for my password. And we're gonna go ahead and enter it, and it's going to go ahead and add the repository. Now we're gonna press Enter to confirm it. Now it's running the now it's running the apt update, which is or apt update, whatever you want to call it, which is refreshing the package list. Now, now what you want to also make sure is that you don't have any updates pending. So I'm going to run an apt update again and make sure that uh, if I can type make sure that there's no updates because before you update your kernel you should make sure your system is completely up to date to the newest version at least i would highly suggest that see 33 packages can be upgraded so we're going to go ahead and run an apt upgrade it's going to tell me what it's going to upgrade it it needs like it needs drivers it's got a few libraries it needs to be updated so we're gonna go ahead and cut this off while I upgrade this and I'll be right back so now we're done with the updates and now we're gonna go ahead and press alt tab again switch down here now we're gonna install the liquid kernel so it's this it's this line now this line is the same for Debian based systems as well you only need to know if it's Debian or Ubuntu based for adding the prerequisites so we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this line too. Now it's going to tell me that it's installing the Liquid kernel and we're going to go press yes. Now this is going to take a few minutes and so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off again and come back while it's when it's done installing. Okay, now we're done installing the kernel. Now, we're going to go ahead and run a uname. Now, as you can see, it's 5.3 generic. It's still running the same kernel that it did. You need to reboot your computer to load the Liquorix kernel. Now, uh, most of your modules should be compatible with this uh, kernel. Now, you want to keep your old kernel intact. And here is why is if somehow a device stops working you need to be able to roll back your kernel so keep this kernel in place until you're sure the Liquorix kernel will work so I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the system and I will be back when it reboots and we've restarted so we're gonna go ahead and check if this kernel actually loaded so we're gonna go press Control T for my terminal and we're going to check the kernel again so we're going to run another uname. Well, I need an update to one of my spice, to a few of my spices actually. I get rid of those. So we're going to run another uname, dash o, and as as you can see, we're running kernel 5.5 .5 now, and it says Liquorix AMD 64. That's what you want to see you, uh, right there. You want to see that it says Liquorix. AMD 64. That is how you know the installation was successful. Now this kernel is going to roll forward automatically with its security patches. You don't have to worry about that. 
especially since how you've added the uh, repositories needed to maintain it. So that was installing the Liquix kernel. Now, uh, Linux Mint, of course, was the example, but this works for any Debian-based system so long as you choose the right repository. Now, there are a couple things that you should keep in mind when installing this kernel. One is this kernel is independently developed. It's not developed by the Linux kernel team. It's actually uh, developed by something uh, by an individual team of developers, and they're the ones who support it. No distribution supports it. Debian doesn't support it. Linux Mint, Ubuntu, they don't support it. It's supported by the development team. Now, the next thing you have to keep in mind with this kernel is this is a low latency aspect of this kernel. It disables some of your power saving features. So, what does that mean? Well, if you're running it on a laptop, that means it could sacrifice some of your battery life, such as like uh, charge and etc. And it could have affect the health of your battery as well. Now, Usually, if you're smart about it, it's not a big issue if you keep your laptop plugged in. But if you travel with it, it might not be the best uh, choice for a kernel. This is generally for like production for video or uh, gaming, etc. But uh, it does work on all laptops, so you should have a problem with that. But uh, also, with a laptop, it does generate a little bit more heat because some of the governors are also uh, disabled or turned down. But if you have a good cooling pad, that's not an issue too. I've run this on laptops without issue with overheating as well. With that, that is about all I have. So we're going to go ahead and do my ending spiel, I guess. So if you like this video, Go ahead and give that thumbs up. If you don't, that's what that thumbs down button was for. And go ahead and click that subscribe button as it really helps the channel. And thank you for watching. If you like my content and wish to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, if you wish to see more, check out the videos on your screen.